All right, so if that's energy and how we can move or escape things in space, what is this, how does this affect the comets now? Okay, so here's the energy diagram we are just talking about. And yep. um, remember, there's an energy to go anywhere to infinity the, and yep, beyond. Exactly. Yep. Um, and so, and if your energy level is lower than this, you'll be trapped in a circular elliptical orbit. Yep. If your energy is above that, you can escape. And that's where we get those hyperbolic orbits we just were looking that's at. That's right. So here's the energy for our solar system. So that's the sun, that's Jupiter. You can just about see Mars and Earth in here if you look really hard. <laughs> that's Saturn and Uranus. I okay. bother with yep. everything else. Yeah. Now let's enlarge the little top bit here. All right. And look at the energy of the long period comets. So what we can see is as these long period comets come through, yep. we can measure their speed and we can measure their position. Okay. So and by combining the two, we can work out where it sits on an energy diagram like this. Okay. And here is a histogram showing the energy of the comets. So, so most the of them of are zero. Clear, yeah, so most of the so, are clearly here. So zero yeah. would be this energy up here. Oh. So that's zero energy. So it's this a, is negative and that's positive. So it's above this? So they're all pretty much near zero energy. Interesting, okay. And then there's a tail of them with negative energy. Yep. So if we zoom in, here is the zoom in on the energy curve. Yep. And this is where the energy diagram sits. So they all sit pretty damn close to zero. There, there's a few that are clearly negative, which means they will never be able to escape. So these the are the ones that are trapped in elliptical orbits, and these are the ones that are pretty close to zero. Okay. Now it turns out they're actually very slightly negative. Okay. Ever so slightly negative. So they are trapped. They are going to do so, so, they're, so they're just, it's kind of like they've just barely passed. They've just barely scratched and got yeah. over the line. So and there's so a few trapped. that look like they're marginally positive, but this is almost certainly measurement error. Yeah, okay. Um, All right. So almost a, 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 the number that are positive are about what you expect for the, given the known measurement errors. Okay. All right. So it looks like, with only two exceptions we'll talk about later, that these things are part of our solar system. They are bound, but only very, very slightly. So the energy is negative, but uh, only by a wafer-thin amount of negativeness. So, so then this, I guess, makes sense and kind of explains why they can really seem to really go far out, but they're actually not escaping. They're just, for a very, 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 very long way, will then get stuck and come back. That's right. So if we extrapolate out what they're going to do, now we can't see them when they're far out. Yep. We typically pick them up about Saturn's orbit on their way, and depending on okay. how big they are. Yep. And then they whip around the sun, they disappear out, and once they've gone past Saturn's orbit, we normally lose them. Yep. Um, but if we extrapolate the orbit out, these things are going out to between, now remember, on the previous scale, Earth is one astronomical unit from the sun. Yep. Neptune's 30, 30. Plantex might be 1,000. These things are going out to between 20 and 60,000 astronomical units out. So wait, so there are... 20 and 60,000. So they're 20 and 60 times further than planet, than X. The, than planet X. Okay, that, that's pretty far away. So, so this makes Pluto like nothing and it's close. So that's going on 60,000 astronomical units is about a light year. Okay. So these things are going out about a quarter of the way to Proxima Centauri. But they're still technically the bound is still just a little bit negative. Sun. So they are bound. When the, and the, the typical orbital period is of order millions of years. I was going to say, if you're going that far out, so these then technically do come into the solar system multiple times, just extremely rarely? That's right. Of course, given their period is millions of years, we've never seen any of these twice and we'll never see any of these twice. Yep. But in principle, things like um, these long period comets are often the best ones because yeah. they're very pristine. They haven't yeah. already, um, on the outer parts of their orbit, when they're only a light year out, these are traveling very slowly, a bit walking pace, to be honest. Okay. About one meter per second. So Yeah, that is pretty slow. And you imagine they're trying to go a light year at one meter per second. You can see why it might take one million years or 10 million years to get out there. Yep. So this has led to the idea that we're... Um, uh, uh, I should also mention that when they come into the solar system, their orbit is going to change. Okay. Because they're going to be pulled by Jupiter and Saturn and yeah, the other planets. Yeah, okay. And they're also going to be blowing gas out that acts like a rocket and changes their orbits a little bit. Yeah. And so typically, each time they come in, their energy is going to change by about this much. Oh, okay. So they essentially kind of migrate this way. So the ones in this big spike, yep. as they, this is the orbit and the energy when they come in. Uh, and when they're way out, it'll either be down here or up there. Uh, about 50 50. Okay, all right. And if it goes back out, then we never see it again. Yep. So we expect the spike are comets that are coming into the solar system for, for the, the, the first, first time. Interesting. So this is kind of the exciting spike because they haven't visited the solar system previously, and therefore this is their 
Essentially, we get to see the comet for the first time, but also measure the composition of the comet for the first time. And these are the most spectacular ones because yeah. they're very pristine um, and lots of stuff, I assume, to blow off. Half of them, as they go past, will get a pool from Jupiter or Saturn that adds to the energy. It doesn't have to add very much. They don't need to come anywhere near Jupiter, even on the other side of the solar system. Just, I mean, enough. yeah, I imagine if you're going that slow, just a little bit of a Because their energy, nudge. remember, is yeah. just right on the boundary line. Even a very small, uh, they'll leave the solar system and disappear okay. off, never to be seen again. Yep, and so they presumably then just go somewhere else in the galaxy? Yes. And if it's scattered the other way, then that's what produces these tail down here. Ah. So the idea is this is called the, like, the Oort spike. Yep. And these are comets coming in for the very first time. Okay. And then this tail down here might be second, third, fourth time. So essentially it goes out, then comes back, but then it's a little bit closer, and a little bit closer, and a little bit closer. And this could end up producing the Halley-type comets. These uh, could be these ones that are trapped into shorter orbits. Those just at the very tail end of it. Okay. Um, so, I mean, if these are really far out then, this implies there's a really far out part of our solar system. Yes. So this leads to the idea of the Oort cloud. Okay. So the idea is that we have our inner solar system here and surround get the distance of about a light year is a and all directions because okay. we know these things coming from That's, every direction yep, yep. is a cloud of comets. And so again, first scale here, this box includes all of the Kuiper belt objects and it's just this little middle square here. That's right. And even that little square is far too big to scale. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll do an um, analogy. I'll, sh I'll film that outside in a bit. Yeah, I was um, say, we may not fit it in this room. No. Um, and so we've got this huge spherical cloud and s full of comets. Uh, most of it should be orbiting out there, presumably for billions of years. And every now and then one of them gets a death wish and plunges in to view the inner solar system. To do a scale model of just how big the Oort cloud is, we have to go outside, as we said. So that coin there is Jupiter's orbit. My hand is Neptune's orbit. The entire Kuiper belt fits in that path. And now we have to use a drone to see where the Oort cloud is. Oort cloud covers all this area we're seeing here. All this area we're seeing here. There's still all the Oort cloud. All the Oort cloud. As we keep on zooming out, Eventually, about now, the entire screen is about the right size on the scale to be the Oort cloud. So remember that coin in my hand was the Jupiter's orbit around the Sun, my hand was Neptune's orbit and the uh, Kuiper belt, and the entire image here is about the size of the Oort cloud on this scale.